Welcome back to Wardcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod, as always. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the conclusion of the annoying drama that's been going on in Georgia uh, related to the RICO prosecution that's happening by Fannie Willis's office against Donald Trump and the other co-defendants. OK, so we have a very fair minded decision by Judge McAfee here, who I predicted would render a fair judgment. And anybody who's criticizing his judgment is just wrong and biased and a hack uh, for either side. Both the right, uh, both actually only the right wing has been attacking the decision because they don't like the fact that the judge didn't dismiss the indictment. So there were three things that I predicted in my original video, which I'm going to show you guys right now in a second where I said that there are three things that are going to happen in this, three main things that are going to be at the conclusion of this, okay? Number one, I told you guys that there was no conflict of interest here. And guess what? The judge's decision, which we're going to read in a second, found that there was no evidence of conflict of interest, actual, actual conflict of interest, which is required by Georgia law to disqualify a prosecutor. That's number one. Number two, I told you that there is no way that the indictment will be dismissed by the judge. And guess what? That's exactly what the judge said, that it would not be fair to the state and the people of Georgia to just get rid of the indictment because a couple of lawyers did something wrong, even if the lawyers did something wrong. Number three, and the most important thing, I told you guys that the most likely outcome will be that Judge McAfee will disqualify or remove uh, Nathan Wade, who's the prosecutor that had a relationship with Fannie Willis from this case. And that's exactly the outcome. In fact, here it is. Nathan Wade removes himself from the case. He voluntarily resigned because that's the right thing to do. Okay, for the benefit of the case, we the, the most important thing is to put the traitor behind bars and we need this case to go forward. In case the federal cases fail, we need the state case to remain alive. And Nathan Wade did the right thing. I think he should have done this from the beginning. He should have just disqualified himself. Okay, because in my opinion, prosecutors should not be having relationships with one another. But that's not the law in Georgia. Technically, prosecutors can have relationships. But if anything looks improper, then your cases are going to be in trouble. And that's what happened here. They made horrible judgment, uh, ethical judgments here, uh, both Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade. And now he has disqualified himself because of the judge's decision. So good on him. Judge McAfee made a perfectly fair decision for all sides. And I want to commend him for doing that. He had a very tough position because the judges, you have to understand, are part of the judicial branch. And they don't like interfering with the fundamental task of the prosecutors, which is bringing cases against people. And it's very rare, almost unheard of, for a judge to just rand like just kick a, a prosecutor off a case that's that's an extreme move Judges don't like getting in the muck and trying to disqualify prosecutors because they're part of a different branch of government. OK, the prosecutors are part of the executive branch. The judges are part of the judiciary branch. They don't they don't want to interfere with the functions of the uh, prosecutors, the executive branch, because that's not our tradition. We have a separation of powers where the one branch does not try to mess with the fundamental functions of another. And big, bringing case against criminals is the right of prosecutors, uh, you know, given that they have evidence to support their claims and a grand jury indicts the criminals, uh, the the, the the accused criminals here, the defendants, and they have a, a grand jury in Georgia indicted in Fulton County, Donald Trump and all these people. So the judge is going to be very, very hesitant to get just get rid of a prosecutor or get rid of an indictment. And that's why I told you guys that that's not going to happen. And there wasn't enough evidence brought by the idiot who represented uh, the Donald Trump side, she, uh, Ashley Merchant, this uh, criminal loving right winger over here. Uh, she didn't have the evidence to back up any kind of conflict of interest. Here's a brief cliff of what I had to say regarding what's going to happen just to just to make sure everything is clear what's not going to happen is that the judge is not going to dismiss the indictment because the indictment stands for itself no matter what else happens to the lawyers the lawyers may get disqualified who cares the prosecutors but the but the the text and the arguments in the indictment the charges in the indictment are solid and the judge is not going to dismiss the indictment because a couple lawyers did something stupid OK, so that's that's the most important thing. Number two, what's what's most likely to happen? Given the evidence here, most likely what's going to happen is that the judge is only going to disqualify Nathan Way. That would be my guess about what the judge is going to do, because Fanny. So I went on to talk about the the uh, section about the uh, conflict of interest was over here. I'm not going to play for you guys, but I also told you guys that the only interest instance where there can be a conflict of interest is if it crosses uh, the party lines. For example, if a judge was having a sexual relationship with one of the sides, the defend the defendants or the prosecutors, then the judge would have to recuse himself. And in a case like that, both sides would step aside. I've seen one case where that was true, uh, where 
they didn't step aside and the judge ended up getting removed or suspended from the bench and the prosecutor was disbarred. Okay, this happened a long time ago where uh, there was a judge who oversaw a case where the prosecutor and the judge had a recent relationship and they didn't disclose it. Both sides were screwed. The judge has to be a fair arbiter of the law. And if they're having a relationship with one of the sides, either the defense attorney, one of the defense attorneys or the prosecutors, then that can be construed. Even if the judge is being 100% fair, it looks like a conflict of interest and that's bad for the bench, uh, for the for the honor of all the sides. Okay, it makes it look like you're making, if you make a favorable decisions towards uh, either side, if you're having a relationship with one of the sides, it makes it look like you're, it's favoritism. So that's why the, the both sides were punished in that case. That was, a, that's very rare. The, um, most of the time, judges do not have, uh, don't, they don't have a relationship with prosecutors. And if they do, they disclose it and they recuse themselves. She, all this happened because she made a very bad decision to have a relationship with a guy and appoint him as a top prosecutor in a case where it's one of the important, most important cases in Georgia history. And she effed herself up here. So Fannie Willis has a lot of blame. Okay, I'm going to be blaming everybody at the end of this after we go over this. I got lots of blame to go around for everyone, uh, including the Trump side, who I will take the skin off at the end of the video. But let's go over the judge's decision. So state of Georgia versus Donald Trump and everybody and, and the main guy who brought this uh, case was Roman. This the, These ethical violation claims and this motion to dismiss the indictment and to disqualify the Fulton um, County District Attorney. This was brought mainly by Michael Roman. Okay, That Ashley Merchant woman is the lawyer for this guy. Okay, But then Donald Trump and everybody else joined in because they would also benefit if they can dismiss the indictment. So I'm going to go and cut through all the BS and get through, get to the most important part of the judge's decision here. An order of mendacity remains, meaning dishonesty. The court is not under an obligation to ferret out every instance of potential dishonesty from each witness or defendant ever presented in open court. He's referring to all the people who testified. The judge has doubts about what Fannie Willis and her side were saying about when the relationship started between the two of them. Um, but there wasn't enough evidence from the Donald Trump side, from the Mike Roman side, to prove that they used government money to go on their vacations, which was one of the claims against them. So even though there wasn't enough evidence for the judge to find that there was conflict of interest or any kind of ethical violations, uh, the judge is still saying that there was an odor of mendacity, meaning odor of you know nefarious things happening, meaning lying. OK, um, by certain people who testified, he's referring to Fannie Willis and, and Wade, uh, where there were some discrepancies about when the relationship started. And the judge is saying it smells bad. OK, but nevertheless, that is not the, the bar for disqualifying a prosecutor. So he can't do anything based on that. He just thinks things smell bad. That's not the legal standard. You have to find clear and concise evidence that there was ethical violation by the prosecutor in order to disqualify them. Yet reasonable questions about whether the district attorney and her hand selected lead uh, lead special assistant district attorney testified untruthfully about the timing of their relationship further underpin the finding of an appearance of impropriety and the need to make proportional efforts to cure it. Dismissal of an indictment is not the appropriate remedy to adequately uh, dissipate the financial cloud of impropriety and potential untruthfulness found here. Dismissal of an indictment, meaning getting rid of all the charges is not the appropriate remedy, which is what I told you in that video, I just showed you guys, I told you that's an extremely difficult thing to do just to toss out a grand jury indictment. A, a bunch of regular citizens in Georgia indicted Donald Trump and the rest of the crew. And to get rid of that indictment, to toss it in the garbage, there has to be significant proof of like constitutional violations by the prosecutors of the defendants to remove it. Some, you know, personal picadillos here about uh, Fannie Willis's personal life is not grounds to get rid of an indictment. That's a very serious legal document, which judges take seriously. There has not been a showing that the defendants do process rights have been violated or that the issues involved prejudice the defendants in any way, because this has nothing to do with Trump's uh, crimes in Georgia. Okay, this is a complete non-starter as far as the facts of the case go. This is just about them attacking the personal life of the prosecutors because the prosecutors did something stupid here. Okay, they opened themselves up to this ethical attack, which is a valid attack. The prosecutors had to be in good ethical standing. That's why the court has to take this seriously. Nor is disqualification of a uh, constitutional officer 
meaning a DA necessary when a less drastic and sufficiently remedial option is available. The court therefore concludes that the prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of the two options. The district attorney may choose to step aside along with the whole of her office and refer the prosecution to the prosecution attorney's counsel for reassignment. That's That means that somebody else, in, it, was, it will be another county prosecutor who takes up the case because it can't be the Fulton County prosecutor. So it will be another uh, county and then there are questions about jurisdiction that's going to be involved. So it's going to be a mess, but that's not going to happen here. Alternatively, prosecutor Wade can withdraw, allowing the district attorney, the defendants and the public to move forward without his presence or remuneration distracting from and potentially compromising the merits of this case. So now that I've criticized Fannie Willis and praised the judge for doing the right thing, let me get to the Trump side. The Trump side only brought these personal life accusations against uh, Fannie Willis, not because they care about the ethical conduct of the prosecutors. They know they're screwed at trial and they're trying to do whatever they can to get out of actually going to trial. So that's why they're trying to attack the ethical uh, responsibilities of the prosecutors and trying to claim they did something wrong just to get rid of the case that way so they don't have to argue the case on the facts because uh, Donald Trump is guilty on the facts and every commonsensical person knows that. Anybody who's read the indictment and has has taken a look at the public conduct of Donald Trump knows that's true. Him and his uh, lawyers, uh, John Eastman, Jeffrey Clark, all these people, they're trying to overturn the election in Georgia, contacting the the Georgia, uh, both the, the election people and the Congress people directly to try to get them to vote against certifying the election or reverse the certification. They were contacting uh, Kemp through many channels to try to get that done because the governor and the state legislature is involved in certifying the election and they did the right thing, by the way. Uh, credit to Kemp for doing that. Kemp did the right thing. Uh, Donald Trump and his uh, co cohort is guilty. They're all criminals uh, in Georgia, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the law. That's why the prosecutors have uh, indicted them. And now this case will be moving forward. Now, like I said, there will be appeals. I don't know. I have no prediction on how the appeals courts in Georgia are going to, uh, you know, take up this case, whether they're going to take it up or not. They don't have to. This is a very low level civil case, civil claim. Um, but most likely the appeals courts, the intermediate appeals courts will take this up and they'll review it. Most likely they'll uphold the judge's decision. But I I can't guarantee that. I don't know the floor, uh, the Georgia appeals courts well enough to um, to say what they're going to do. And the Georgia Supreme Court, maybe they'll take it up. I doubt it. Uh, it will probably be resolved at the appeals level, but we'll see. Donald Trump's side is going to do whatever they can to, you know, uh, you know, labor this as much as possible. They're going to exhaust all the appeals that they have legally available to them. And that's what they've been doing in all the other cases. But anyways, I'm done talking about this. I don't care what happens. This is the last video I'll be making on this personal, these you know, personal attacks on uh, the prosecutors that they're doing, even if they're valid attacks. Um, I, I want to actually talk about the the actual case. OK, I I'm not going to make any more videos. You guys will have plenty of other idiots out there who are talking about this. I don't give a damn and I'm done. I'm sick of talking about this, both from the Trump side and from the Fannie Willis side. Uh, I'm not impressed with Fannie Willis at all. I think she made a huge mistake here and has horrible judgment in one of the most important cases. So I am no fan of Fannie Willis. But nevertheless, uh, I like what the judge did. He made a great decision. And that's the bottom line for this video. And if you're not happy with that, that's a sad day for you. You can have your opinion and I'll be having mine. I am never going to be a partisan hack for the Democrats, the Republicans, or anybody else. I'm an individual with my own opinions based on my knowledge of the law and the facts that I see before me and the rational judgments that I think are necessary to uphold the law and the public's trust in the legal system. That's the driver for my commentary. If you don't like that, you're in the wrong place. There are many other hacks out there, right wing, and left-wing hacks. This is not a hack channel. And that's the bottom line. Most of the people who watch my videos know that's where I'm coming from. And thank you so much for watching, as always. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and press all for future videos. If you want to support my work, you can do so over here. Watch my last video over here, and I'll see you guys all in my next video, as always.